Now let's look at where those variations come from. Um, Darwin talked about, or we learned about in Darwin, uh, looking at Darwin, we learned about that variation that's there, like curly hair and dark hair and long and tall and short and round and all the variation that shows up in a species. He talked about it being there, but they didn't have the scientific understanding then to know why that variation was there or what was causing it. Now with modern technology, we know about things like protein analysis and DNA, and we know exactly why that trait is different from one to another. So let's, let's look at that and actually how it builds and reinforces a lot of the things that, that Darwin talked about. So there's two sources of variation in a species, and they come from either mutation or sexual reproduction. So first let's talk about mutation. Remember that your your DNA codes for everything about you, your hair color, your skin, your fingernail growth rate, all of that. But it's made of a code of just A's and C's and T's and G's. And they match up. We know that A and T and C and G match up like this. And so this sequence, if I had, you know, G, G, C, A, T, A, T, it's going to have its complementary code that goes along with it and your body can read that code and turn it into something in particular whether that's uh, hair proteins or whether that's insulin or testosterone or whatever your body needs to be producing it's built into that code a mutation is when something changes in that DNA recipe for whatever reason it might be so um, the causes that can be environmental. So for example, we know that uh, really strong UV light, when it strikes the skin, if, you get caught, if you're out in the sun a lot without sunscreen, that that energy can cause mutations. It can scramble some of these things. So frequent sunburns can lead to an increased chance of skin cancer because your DNA is getting scrambled by the sun. That's why we wear sunblock. That's why we wear sunglasses to help protect our eyes, things like that. So that's an environmental cause. Or certain chemicals. We know that there are chemicals in things like cigarettes and, and different um, chemicals uh, like cleaners or industrial chemicals. We know that being exposed to those like asbestos, exposure to those chemicals, breathing them in or getting them on your skin can also cause mutations which can lead to some pretty major problems. So those are environmental causes of, of changes. There's also sometimes just copying errors. So whenever your body has a cell, you remember if you, um, in mitosis you probably learned that that one cell eventually is gonna split into two cells. But in order to do that, your body has to take this DNA and make a copy of it so that one copy can go here and another copy can go here. Well, sometimes when your body's making that copy, there's an error. Maybe it put a T where there should have been an A. And your body has some ways of going in and finding those errors and fixing them, but every once in a while, one of them slips through and, and doesn't get fixed. So those are the main causes, either environmental through chemical or radiation or something, or sometimes just a straight copying error. Now, the individual changes that can happen can either be a, a loss or a duplication of a section. So let's say you had a, uh, a, a C, T, G, G, A section of DNA. Well, a loss would be like, let's say this T just kind of disappeared. And so in the next copy, now it's A, A, C, G, G, A that might code for something very different and it might be something good it might be something bad we'll, we'll come to that in just a second but it's definitely going to be slightly different than what it was before or maybe something got duplicated maybe for some reason it went a a c a a c t g g a so this a a c got put in there twice somehow or, or maybe even just a single letter, like maybe a double T, as that was being copied. That's also going to change this. Ooh, pardon me. In one way or another, it's going to change the message. 
Uh, and sometimes it's just a change in the sequence. Maybe something got twisted or, or garbled up. And so now maybe it's uh, A, A, C, A, G, G. Maybe this section got flipped around backwards somehow in the next copy. And that doesn't have to just be sets of three. Maybe it's a big section or, or maybe just a couple of letters. Any of these things we would call mutations. It's a change in that DNA code it's going to have an effect on the individual. Now the effect that this could have could be one of three things. Uh, and the, probably the most common is a neutral mutation. Because there's huge sections of our DNA that as far as we can tell don't really do much. So if a mutation happens in that part of my DNA that doesn't do a whole lot, um, it doesn't affect me because that DNA doesn't seem to really do much. So if there's a mutation there, it doesn't affect me. It's still there, but it's just not going to affect me. Harmful mutations, though, would be where the mutation caused something to not work. So, for example, let's say this was insulin. Maybe this was the blueprint or the code for insulin. And the mutation means now you don't have insulin. This is something else. It's not insulin though. Or at least it's insulin that doesn't function right. So maybe that mutation means your body now doesn't make insulin. You're a diabetic. Maybe it's a hormone, another hormone that means that you don't grow the way that you should. Or maybe you you can't grow hair. Or maybe you're, all of your hair is white because you can't grow, your body can't make colored pigments. Or things like that. Those are all mutations that that could show up. Now, a harmful mutation just means it's actually going to harm you. So before modern medicine, um, not having insulin would be absolutely harmful, and your life expectancy is going to be much lower than, an, than another person because you don't have insulin, you can't store sugar properly. Another one might be uh, maybe it caused your during development of, let's say, a, a baby, maybe your legs are much smaller than they should be. Well, if you're an animal that has to climb or, or maybe that has to chase down its prey, having those smaller legs might be a disadvantage. That could be a harmful mutation. It could be a beneficial one too in other circumstances. But a harmful one is a change that, that negatively impacts you. Something that's gonna make it less likely for you to either survive or reproduce or something like that. And then there's beneficial. They're probably the most rare. It's, it's more likely that the, the mutation does either nothing or that the mutation hurts you because your DNA is working. So a change is more likely going to mess something up. But every once in a while, there could be a mutation that gives you an advantage. It makes you a little stronger or faster or maybe more attractive to the opposite sex or, or for whatever reason, it gives you either a survival or a reproductive advantage. Those are probably the least likely outcomes of a mutation, but they do happen every once in a while, and those are the ones that we think are most likely to get passed on. Now, a couple of misconceptions I just want to touch on here, um, and these are in your notes, so let's, let's just go through them. That mutations occur only when they're needed to adapt. That would be like uh, an organism that suddenly it gets cold, and it starts mutating to try to grow new hair. That's kind of a very Lamarck sort of idea, like that desire to want to change. These mutations are happening all the time. You and I probably have some mutations in our body right now. And hopefully that's not detrimental to us. They may just be really small things like maybe I have a mole on my arm. Maybe that's a little mutation that made that patch of skin get darker. Or... I mean, they're, sometimes they're just minor, minor things. But, but they don't show up when we need them. They're just happening all the time. They might happen if you get exposed to more radiation or more chemicals or something, but they don't happen just when we need them. They, they're just happening all the time in the background. And the second one is that harmful mutations are more common and will accumulate and the species will degrade. Well, yes, harmful mutations are more common, but if you have a harmful mutation, you're less likely to either survive or to be able to sexually reproduce. 
So the chance of that harmful mutation being passed on to your offspring is lower. And so that harmful mutation shouldn't build up in the population. Ideally, they would, they would tend to disappear out of the population because those organisms are less likely to survive. And the third one, since mutations are random or chance events, then evolution is pure chance. Those mutations are, ra are random, like they're happening in the background all the time. But if you have a beneficial mutation, that's not random chance that it survives. It's because that mutation gives you a benefit. So it's not pure chance. There's definitely some chance involved. But having that benefit, that beneficial mutation, gives you a higher odds of surviving. So let's say um, a duck lays eggs. And let's say, I'm just going to throw a number out. Let's say 50% of the offspring usually survive. So each of those offspring statistically should have about a 50-50 chance of surviving. Let's say one of those eggs has a beneficial mutation. Maybe it, it doesn't mean it's guaranteed to survive, but maybe its survival chance is 60% or maybe even 65-70% chance. That one could still die, but it has a better chance of surviving and a better chance of passing on its offspring. So it's not random pure random chance it's because there is a benefit to having that trait so it's more likely to get passed on the last one to think about at the bottom of the page there is that keep in mind only the mutations that are passed on to your offspring will actually carry on so for example if if i have a mutation right now in my finger and let's say that it suddenly makes me better at something i don't even know what that mutation though i can't pass on to my children because the only thing i pass on to my children don't think about it too much but really is i give a sperm and my wife gives an egg and that's what my kids get from me the genes that are in the cell of my finger they don't get passed on only the ones that are in my sperm or in my eggs so as those cells are being created if a mutation happens there, then it has the potential to be passed on. It's partly why when you go to, let's say, the dentist and you get an x-ray, they give you a lead shield, which almost always covers your reproductive areas, because if a mutation happens there, it's going to be more likely to get passed on and could negatively impact your children. It might beneficially benefit them, but remember that either... Um, neutral or negative mutations are way more common than beneficial ones. It's also why if you're pregnant, a dentist won't even give you an x-ray. If, if at all possible, they will avoid doing anything that might cause a mutation in that growing embryo because a small mutation when you're this big is going to be a big mutation when you're, when you're an adult, when you're full-sized grown. So keep that in mind. Just because a mutation happened in, in something doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to be passed on. So we'll stop there. That's mutations, uh, a good description of it. If there's anything there that, uh, that gives you trouble, let me know. I say that a lot, I know, but if there's something, uh, please reach out and, and get help or, or ask your questions before they, before they build up and then it's harder to deal with a little bit later. So we'll stop there for this one.